Today I'll be teaching you guys about women in sports and how it evolved over time. Starting prior to the 1870s, activities for women were non-competitive, informal, and ruleless because it was thought that muscular and brain labor were reduced during menstruation periods, so they needed to conserve their energy. This enforces the gender bias towards women by forcing them into the role of fragile beings that should take the role of a housemaker to their strong masculine husbands. We saw some improvement in women's sports in 1892 when Smith's College introduced women's basketball, which was the first time that women had involvement in intercollegiate sports. Starting in the 19th century, women's sports showed more rise as women were allowed to participate in more sports such as horseback riding, archery, golf, tennis, skiing, and ice skating. This still forced women into this stereotype of not being able to do physically straining activities, making a distinction between what was acceptable for women and encouraged for men. The major platform that allowed women to participate in sports were called play days, where they could compete against other students on specific days delegated by the universities. In 1936, 70% of schools said this was the way they allowed women to participate in sports. Although this was an improvement, women were still discriminated against as they were only allowed to compete when given permission. Following the movement at Smith's College, the NAAF was formed to encourage intercollegiate competition among women, which led to Jackie Mitchell, who was the first women professional baseball player, striking out male baseball legend Babe Ruth in 1931. Following this, the commissioner banned women from baseball due to the threat of women being able to perform better than men, destroying the hegemonic masculinity that has been enforced for so long. Shortly after the creation of the NAAF, the Civil Rights Acts were put into law and led to the addition of Title IX, which banned the discrimination based on sex. Quickly following the addition of Title IX, industries such as the NCAA were worried that the acts would hurt their financial assets and political power because women would be equal to men in college sports like they never have before. In order to keep this from happening, the NCAA pushed to limit the Title IX to sports so they could have more control over women, women's athletics. They did this by trying to work with the Women's Alliance for Sports in order to have complete control. As this idea did not work out for the NCAA, it resulted in them accepting women's sports for what it was. This resulted in many positive changes changes for women. Here are some facts to prove it. Another issue in women's sports is the wage gap, and here are some facts. WNBA players pay $400,000 less than the lowest paid player in the NBA. This is said to be because the WNBA league revenue is less and their seasons are shorter. Our own U.S. Women's National Soccer Team filed a wage discrimination act with the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission because they were receiving 63% of what the men's team was earning, even though they are more decorated, winning three World Cups compared to the men's zero. The first graph shows that there are 28 or less women than men in Olympic committees. The second graph shows the difference between men and women's salary according to sport. Venus Williams is one of the most decorated athletes and, and one of the only women to earn an equal amount as men in their sport. Here's a short clip from Newsy explaining the issue. Serena Williams is now the top earning female athlete in the world, according to Forbes. Williams earned $28.9 million in prize money and endorsements throughout the last 12 months. She is also the top ranked player in the world after winning three Grand Slams in 2015. Williams overtakes her tennis rival, Maria Sharapova, who's topped Forbes' highest paid female athletes list each of the past 11 years. Sharapova lost endorsements with Nike, Porsche, and American Express after failing a drug test at the Australian Open in January. Wednesday, the ITF announced Sharapova will be suspended for two years after testing positive for the drug meldonium. Sharapova's earnings dropped from nearly $30 million last year to just under $22 million this year, which was still more than enough to secure the number two spot in the rankings. Female tennis players made up eight of the top ten athletes on Forbes' list. UFC fighter Ronda Rousey and NASCAR driver Danica Patrick were the only athletes from other sports who made the cut. Rousey and Patrick each earned $14 million, good enough for the number three and number four spots on the list respectively. Forbes counted prize money, bonuses, endorsements, appearance fees, and licensing income between June 1, 2015 and June 1, 2016 for their rankings. The list was released just as the U.S. women's soccer team is fighting in court to be paid the same as their male counterparts. Williams weighed in on women athletes' struggle for equal pay in an interview for the July issue of Glamour. Williams said, These sports have a lot of work to do, and I really hope that I can be helpful in that journey because I do believe that women deserve the same pay. We work just as hard as men do, and to be paid less just because of my sex, it doesn't seem fair. In the Glamour interview, Williams credited her older sister Venus and tennis legend Billie Jean King for paving the way for her. 